This episode is going to be about tricks. And we're going to trick these trailers out, make them do things that other trailers can't do. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some new glider wheels. So, I made some pins. Just kind of leveled off the surface there so I could get my drill bit to start. This is my 5 8 cold roll stock. I'm just going to weld this straight to the frame. And I got some uh, tires from old Harvey. And uh, 5 8 inside. Got some bearings in there. And uh, I made a little bushing to keep it up off the frame. This will just slide on here. When I get it in there, I'll just weld that in place. And then I bought some pins also, a little case of pins at Harbor Freight. Uh, anyway, this is uh, what will happen. So I just took my 5 8 pin. I measured 4 inches out from here. I have an 8 inch tire. And then I just welded that. 90 degrees with the front of the trailer. This is the front end with the front fender. This is the inside lip of the three inch channel. But I'm just gonna weld it four places, two on each side, and then that cold roll be enough to handle it. So here we have our finished product. We got the pin in place. It's easy to just take in and out. I kind of made sure that my pin holes were aligned forward so I'd be able to pull the pins easy. Uh, but if you want to see how these work, you have to wait for the test video. As you can see, we made a few changes this time around to our slider. We added these bump stops for the front of the tires. And we're going to test these out and see if possibly we can get this to go ahead and slide before we have to strap it down. Maybe save a little time getting in and out of the razor, but that'll be in our test video. We'll see how it works. Another thing is, when these racks are getting a little heavier, we used a little thicker metal this build, and we added these, and we also added some floor grade, so that there's a little less surface, uh, a little more surface area on the tire and a little less tension spots. But another thing, because it's adding all this weight, is we got these little wheels. Oh, they're on the ground now, but we got these wheels, these ca uh, non-swiveling casters. We just cut the bolt holes off, and they just tacked them in there. And they made it very manageable to be able to pick this up and move it around. On the last trailer build, you might have saw that we had a white slider. But this time, we're going black. And this is the section we're at. We're going to be adding this. We are able to pick this up. It's a quarter inch sheet of HDPE. It's a two by four. That's the largest that they'll ship to you uh, from Amazon. So what we're going to do is make three inch cuts all the way down and we'll have two four foot sections that we'll put back to back on the tongue of the trailer for an eight foot total. And that should give us all the sliding distance that we need on this trailer. Uh, then once we have those important ones cut, then we'll take our scraps and we'll add them to our trolley slider. We're going to take this over to the table saw now. For the trolley slider, this distance here is three inches and an eighth. And I'm just going to have a strip. And I'm going to use the black time, but I got the old white pieces to kind of show you some contrast. So we'll go the full length of this. Get your measurements there. I got 16 and a half, or 16 and three quarter. So we'll have three and an eighth inch here. And then we're going to do a side one that's going to be right here. And I'm going to go from this outside edge to this outside edge. And it's going to be three inches tall, maybe a little less, depending on the width of your weld bead you got there. 
but I'm going to go ahead and do a strap all the way across instead of doing just these just to make it a little easier and a little stronger. Another thing we did on this was we added this bevel here so that we could have just kind of a little transition. If it was going to slide and hit a bump, then maybe it would kind of want to just kind of ramp over it. So we added the bevel on both sides of the last trailer and that's what we're going to do again. We're going to do a bevel here and here and here. Just a 45 degree and we'll just tilt the table saw. The last pieces we have to make are a little bit of anti-chafe that's going to go on the front in the back. That way if there's any teeter-totter while you're moving then it won't be rubbing on the metal and rubbing your paint. It'll hit on that. So it'll just be a little strip here. Now that we have all of our pieces cut we went ahead and drilled a hole two inches from each end. And I was using a 21 drill bit and then the sp I put one in the center and then the spacing came out to be about seven and a half inches in between each screw and this is real close to what we did on Rob's I kind of had my fingers like so and it came out right about at that and it's been working real good his is three years old and has about 5,000 miles on it so I think we're gonna be safe with this same measurements um, what we have is we have these beveled screws and they're really good for self-centering but what we're going to do now is we're going to take a half inch drill bit which is just larger than the head of that and we're going to bevel each one of these holes just barely enough to where this will be down below the plastic. We don't want to get this too high otherwise this will be taken off the skin from the other plastic. So go ahead and peel this off so I can get a good eye on it. Take our half inch bit Go real slow and light. Do a little check. And I just take the back side of this, and if that lip disappears, then we're good. It's better to check too often, because once you want it too deep, it's too late. Now we can look at that and the head's just under flush and that's going to be just right. As you can see we've gone into full paint mode already. We've got our primer down and our, at least our first coat of black paint and you're going to want all your paint and primer down and dry it well before you start to apply these strips so that you won't have any rusting going on underneath it. So we're just going to take this slider and start it where our back trailer begins. Make sure it's centered and then these are self tapping. They're like a deck screw uh, for like a plastic fence but I don't want to get this stuck in the middle of my thicker metal. This is a little thicker than what this is designed for. So I'm going to pilot this each time with my 21 drill bit. Now you'll see this is now below the surface of this. And we'll just line this up, keep going down one at a time so that we don't create any kind of a bow by going from the outside. But if we just keep on going the same line, it'll work just like that. Now 
And after you finish that first piece, then you'll move into this next piece and just leave this flush butted up against and just keep on going down the rest of the way. Uh, and here's what your finished product will look like. So for the bottom skids, I made a matching width for the seat channel. I went six inches wide, four inches apart on the center of the holes, and I put my 45 degree bevel, just like I did on those other pieces. Okay, so we got some smaller lawnmower wheels for the front end, and we used a half inch uh, hot roll dowel, and then we drilled some holes in the side of it to catch it with a pin, and then we just welded that bar to the bottom all the way across. It's about a seven and a half inch bar. Uh, depending on what wheels you get will make up the difference. It's not really a hard measurement, and you got this. We added these front wheels in the last revision, we just had a little bar that we did to bump it, and that'll help keep the dirt out of here. But also now we have the wheels so that it's easy for one person to grab one end of the bar and then be able to maneuver this wherever they need to for storage. Uh, it also makes it kind of easy to move the trailer back and forth. Uh, like I said, it's up off the ground. Uh, your nose isn't going to dig in. And so it gives you a nice kind of a cushion uh, rubber surface area that you're not going to scrape paint off, so I think this is going to be a really good addition to this uh, 2.0 version trailer. This time, we decided to take a different approach when it came to strapping down the tires. We're still going to use a single strap to go over the tire and lock it down, but we wanted a accessible, easy to grab, quick point that would uh, be easy to get to when we're getting our hooks grappled. And another thing is when you come across different types of straps, some of them have that double hook and some have a single hook and some are smaller and we didn't want to have to get into a place where if we needed a strap because we lost one that we'd have to find the exact same one with the right hook so we needed something universal and also when we did that expanded metal flooring we kind of covered up some of the places where we could hook to and we don't want to just hook to the expanded metal we want a nice solid surface uh, so after thinking about it and uh uh, wanting to be able to capture our wider width sand tires and our narrow width stock tires and not have to worry about it This is what we came up with uh, We got an eighth inch steel cable or wire rope, whichever you want to call it and uh, This is supposed to be rated for 1800 pounds the uh, Coupler is supposed to be rated at 90% of that so we should still be up over 1500 pounds we did a couple of calculations on how much uh, torque a strap wrench can put down. And it's gonna be between three and 600 pounds, depending on how long your handle is. But realistically, when the tire starts to sink in, it's probably gonna be less than about 150 pounds. And then the weight of the razor trying to hold in place, I think that we're gonna be well within what we need with this eighth inch. It kind of looks narrow when you look at it on there. But like I said, we got to go with what uh, the ratings say. We want to use the most minimal materials we can so that we're not just adding weight and adding things where we have to have bigger tools and, and this and that. So uh, we went with the eighth inch. Uh, we got some cutters that are supposed to be good up to, up to like a three eighths. And then we went ahead and bought a hydraulic crimper instead of just a long handle one, so it'd be a little easier to handle with just one person. Uh, I still went ahead and got my wife to help me out, and uh, that helped a lot, because this thing gets heavy after you do, what do we do? Uh, four times eight, 32 crimps. So my arm was getting tired for one trailer, and we did two trailers this way. Uh, so we got this. It's got an eighth inch die. I went ahead and ground down on this one side uh, because it just a little thick trying to get up close to this uh, when it's down crimped on the trailer. But I went oversized on the drill holes more than what was needed uh, for this to be able to make it through. Now this is an eyelet and this is a stainless steel piece that keeps 
the wire from chafing. So this will come around here like this. And we went through the metal with this. So the reason why I went with a larger hole is because this eyelet needs to be able to flop over and fold and go in the right direction. And if it's a tight hole, it's going to be really pulling over to the side. So anyway, I was just going to kind of demonstrate how this works. First off, you have to feed the crimping coupler in there. We had this fed through our metal already. We just expanded this out with some needle notice pliers and then pinched it back on the other side of the hole. And we'll show you that over there on the trailer here in a minute. But we fed this through the hole, came back around. Then we just kind of fed this down. I have to have my wife speed this and up. <sighs> All right. So, let's get it as tight as you can. Snug it on there. And then this particular tool, there's several of them that are different. You just feed that in there. Bring this around, capture it, make sure your hydraulics on, and then you kind of want to capture this and get it square because a little bit off and it'll start floating the other way. So with that like that, we kind of did a little at last pull on it to get it tight. So make one crimp, loosen it up, and then we've got to make another crimp. So we just back that off and let the pressure loose. And so we got a crimp and a crimp. If you can kind of see, it kind of fuses that aluminum down into the wire. So it makes a good strong hold. Now, one thing about this is this will wear your hands out after using it a bunch. So make sure you use gloves, get someone to help you if you can, and also watch these ends because they'll come full stab into your finger and it'll be like eight holes instead of one. So it's kind of rough to work with, and then a lot of people will go ahead and put a piece of heat shrink on the end to kind of protect from that. Uh, I would suggest leaving at least one and a half times the wire diameter outside of the crimp so that it, it makes a good crimp because it's going to want to pull out a little bit when you're up against a hard surface. But anyway, that's how we did it. And we'll go over there and show you on the trailer what it looks like. This is what it looked like on the final product. Like I was saying, we weren't able to find a good hooking point because of the expanded metal. So we were able to take this eyelet, feed it through there, crimp it here, crimp it here. And now we can just run over these. And these will also do good out in the weather with the trailer. Uh, if we were to use some kind of a synthetic rope or something, the sunlight would have tore it up. And this is a stainless, an aluminum and stainless. So it should hold up really well. So what we did was we oversized these holes so this would have plenty of play and be able to come over at different angles. We found at first when we went with tighter holes that it didn't have good movement so we had to open them up. But now the hook will be able to come over here or here and be able to get in that center line with the tire real well. So this is kind of a test. We haven't been down this road before. So uh, we're gonna give you all some updates further on on the durability of how this worked out. So up here on the front, with the other thing we were trying out, the new bump stop, we didn't wanna have to reach down past anything and we didn't want any hard fouling. So we just made this all strong enough with that two inch strap and the two by two angle iron 
And uh, we did the same thing. We oversized the holes here and here. And uh, now it also makes this really easy. You don't have to reach down underneath, no finding hole. You can grab this, it's easy to get to, and get your hooks on real quick. This concludes our tricks video. Uh, coming up next is what we've all been waiting for, the test video. You're gonna get to see how the fruits of our labor have planned out. First, we're gonna show you how everything tears down, how everything stores, uh, and just seeing how all that stuff we just went through on the tricks video works. Then we're gonna do a loading test, which is also gonna be us getting ready to go to Sand Hollow on our big trip. Then our third set of test videos is gonna be our endurance, where we're gonna see if our trailers make the cut. Are they gonna pass? Or are they gonna fail? We're gonna put about 1,800 miles on them, and I think we're gonna be able to get enough of a answer whether or not the things that we tried, like the uh, cable straps worked, and we'll get a chance to see if our fenders fared out better than they did on 1.0, where they destroyed themselves on the maiden voyage. So all that's coming up. Hopefully y'all stick with us. Thanks. Uh, if our fenders fared better, bleh, see if our fenders fared out better than they, bit, And then we were able to just bring that in and crimp it up. Oh, it's going sideways. <laughs>